Thanks a lot. What's your name, old top? Jarvis, sir. Hiya, Jarvis. I'm Stu Peters of the News. Supposed to interview your master. But as long as he's so permanently lost in an impenetrable forest of females, I guess I'll have to interview you. How does it feel to buckle for such a celebrity? It's a privilege, sir. When it's Mr. Gordon. He's a good lad, huh? The very best, sir. But are his books any good? Surely you've read his Egypt through a camel's eye. No, uh, sorry. I never get that close to a camel. Uh, perhaps you're familiar with his Alpine travel. I wrote the music for that one. Ole, ole. Uh, please, sir. Ole. Uh, please, uh, not huh? here. Though so I've no doubt you do it very well. Why, well, I was a crooner once till they cut my adenoids out. Really, sir? Oh, Mr. Gordon, I've been waiting all afternoon for your autograph. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, please. Oh, please. Yes, indeed. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. How about that? Certainly, mine? certainly. It's been such an inspiring afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. Right. Sorry to keep you waiting. I have just a little Think of that. Very fast. What about mine's last? I know you'll make it the same. Last but not least. Yes. <laughs> there you are. Thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Gordon. My little book of famous names wouldn't be complete without your signature, please. Mrs. Hathaway, I feel highly honored to be in such a distinguished company. Oh, my dear, you're much too modest. Your signature is priceless. I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, yes, Jarvis. A gentleman at the door, sir. Yes. Something the bottom of the Oh, dear. Poor boy, besieged by collectors. Well, run along. Make the little man happy. I'll only be a moment, ladies, if you will please excuse me. This check of yours, he have a bounce again, senor. Get my money now, or you'll go to jail. Operetti, please, please, don't get excited. There must be some mistake. Uh, let, let me see that check. I will hold him. Let me see. Why, I knew it, of course. N-S-F. Don't you know what that means? No, and I don't care. All I'm aware of. But I do, my friend. It explains everything so beautifully. Look. N S F. Not sufficiently familiar. You see, they don't know you at the bank. Oh, I don't care. All I know is oh, that this just is... my luck, Freddy. Too bad, too bad. It's too late to get to the bank today. But I'll tell you what I'll do. First thing in the morning, I'll fix it for you to get your money. If you don't, I'll fix you. Thank you, Freddy. Wilson's just phoned to save a car, you see. Well, tell him to fix it. He tried it. But the sheriff. Oh, my hat. Yes, sir. I've got to do some plain and fancy chiseling or we'll go to jail. You take care of my public jobs. Tell them that I'm just up for China or the stratosphere or tell them anything. Hello, Jerry. Mr. Randall in? Yes, Mr. Gordon, but terribly busy. He's leaving for the coast tonight. Oh, well, then I know I have to see him. How's his uh, disposition? What disposition? Well, he does, does he? Well, I won't have it that way. I don't care if he's John L. Shakespeare. That's the way it goes to press. I'll be... <laughs> Lovely weather we're having, I'm afraid. <laughs> Open season for authors. Well, wish me luck. <clears throat> you. Well? Yes, indeed, J.B., in the pink. Or maybe I should say in the red. How about an advance of my new book? What's it about? Me. Of course it's about you, if you wrote it. Oh, but I haven't written it yet. And you expect me to give you an advance? You always have. Yes, and I've been an old fool. But not again. Haven't I always delivered? Yes, but when? Three months late, six months, any time. Ah, you... but when you got them, they were worth it, uh, weren't they? And besides, J.B., this will be different. Delivered strictly on time. Strictly C.O.D. When you've written the book, we talk about money, not before. And I'll call it um, Seeing America Through Prison Bars or The Royal Road to the Rock Pile with a dedication to my creditors. It is a new angle for a romantic travel book. Then why don't you grab it? All you've done for the last three years is play eeny meeny with an apple. Gallivant around, wearing out self-respecting camels, annoying alligators with your high dive. You call that romance? The height of romance. 
Ah, if you got into the Sultan's harem that time you tried, you'd have come out with a thrilling tale of how Turkish rugs are made. Still hopping on that mush of the boy and the girl and the happy ending. Yeah, too bad your parents didn't share your views. Any fool can write a cook's tour. Oh, yeah? Say, listen, I can write the kind of dribble that you want with both hands tied behind my back, riding around in a merry-go-round. Leave it to you to ride on anything, even if it's a wooden horse. All right, sweetheart, all right. I'll write you the hitchhiker's romance or the pedestrian peregrination to paradise. Not you. You've forgotten what your feet are for. I still hold the amateur record for the mile. Then you'll have to multiply it by 3,000 if you want to talk to me because I'm on my way to San Francisco. Goodbye. Say, why didn't you bet that I can't do it and have a story when I get there? You? Yes. Why, listen, you couldn't, and you wouldn't, oh, because you wouldn't. Listen. Now, now, wait. Wait. down. No, he's up. He's down. He's up. He's down. Now they're in the middle of the ring exchange and blow for a ball. It's anybody's fight. Hey, by the bell. Jackson, come in here. Sit down. Gordon has just made me a proposition, and I want it in legal black and white. A draw two, Jackson. I trust him thoroughly. Oh, I see. Um, a gentleman's agreement. <clears throat> okay, gentlemen, uh, proceed. Well, our boyfriend Cupid here has just bet me twenty thousand dollars that I can't hoop it to San Francisco and write him a novel on the way. And I bet him the novel that I can. And it's got to be good. And he's got to deliver it six months from today. Let me see. March, April, May, June, July. When is the rest of the bet for you, Papa? September fifteenth. Deadline, 5.46. And three quarters, Pacific Standard Time. And not a second later. Uh, <coughs> Toots here, the old party of the first part, further agrees to satisfy all my creditors so that I may leave town. And he's to leave without a cent. And he's not to reveal his real identity to anyone or this agreement. Say, I'll win it in a walk and have time in my hands. Dick, uh, you're, you're crazy. Well, who do you think you are, uh, Gulliver? Gulliver? Gulliver's travel. Well, say, J.B., Jackson waits a bonus. He just named the new book and given me a nom de hoof. Exit Richard Spencer Gordon, author. Enter Dick Gulliver Hoofer. Crawl in out of the rain, too, huh? That's very sensible. Come on, let's look the place over. Well, we're in luck, Grandma. Right 
thoughtful of our absent host to lay a fire for us, huh? There you are, Granny. Let's see if matches around here. Well, here we are. Now, all we need is a couple of blankets and we can curl up here and get dry, Granny. Right? Hey, Grandma. Oh, are we in there, huh? Well, maybe you're right. Success. I found them. Ah! You can't have them. Don't let them, Judy. No, Judy, no. Oh, this is terrible. I'm really awfully sorry, but... You'll be sorrier before I get through with you. Jackie, light that candle. Wait a minute. You don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. But you're not going to lay a hand on these children. You're making an awful mistake. Oh, yes. Well, do you know what drove us to this? No. Did he tell you how he bullied and browbeaten us? No. Of course he didn't. But he did, didn't he, children? He sure did. Yes, yeah, he did. Oh, I see. Oh, he did. Now, if you'll tell me who him is and where him is, I'll look him up the next time I'm there. Oh, please don't do this thing to us. Go back and tell him you couldn't find us. Tell him Gangster's got us. A pirate. Yes, I think he'd like the pirate story best. Judy, maybe he lives here. I'll probably die here of pneumonia before morning, so don't let that worry you. Are you Mr. Henry Townsend? T Townsend? It says on that big box on the porch, for Mr. Henry Townsend. Probably won't fit me, so I'd better get thawed out. I'll be easier to pack. Gee, maybe he's going to call a cop. They don't have cops in the country. Well, they've got sheriffs and posse. Well, he wouldn't call them anyway. He would, too. He wouldn't. He would. Girl, he would. please, I'm trying to think of a story to tell him. I know a swell detective one. Really? No, a story so he won't get suspicious of us until we can get away. Now, wait a minute. Whatever I tell him, agree with me, understand? <laughs> Very wet, but they'll soon be dry. Oh, me, oh, my, they'll soon be dry. Oh, Mr. Townsend. Mr. Townsend, oh, yeah. I feel I owe you an apology. I thought you were someone else. Well, I, I did sense a certain lack of warmth, and you're welcome. I was afraid you were. She thought you men had sent you restaurant. Oh, yes. The him you spoke so much about. A most unpleasant character. Well, thank you. You see, Mr. Townsend, ever since our parents died, we've had to live with this dreadful old man. And even though I worked my fingers to the bone for him, why, he begrudged every mouthful of children ate. He was going to separate us and send these defenseless babies to a home. She don't mean a home, Mr. Townsend. She means asylum. You know, a place where they'd starve us and beat us up. Oh. Well, you see, Mr. Townsend, I had to save them from that. So we ran away. Oh, that's a very, very, very sad story. But I still like the pirate one best. <laughs> oh, sis, what a flop you are, the story thinker upper. <laughs> I think it was sweet. It nearly made me cry. Uh, children, I think you'd better go back to bed. <laughs> what are you going to do now, Judy? Think up another story? Shh, quiet. That must be the joint. Let's take a look at the map and see the best way to get in. Yeah. Right through the kitchen here, and there it is. Nobody's beat us to it. How could they? Only us and Slug and a babe is wise. And they're both in the pen. Say, why couldn't you and me grab that stuff off and go places? Before they make their break. Slug is a bad egg to double cross. Ah, oh, come on. You're being awfully kind. I wish I could tell the truth. Oh, you're just a little out of practice, that's all. It'll come back to you. Go on, each side in. It's good for you. Honestly, Mr. Townsend, what I told you was partly true. Mm -hmm. 
An old man has been making our lives so miserable we couldn't stand any longer. So today we ran away. On foot? It's weird, yeah? Oh, we hitchhiked a good ways. And then when the storm came up, we... Well, yeah, but it isn't safe for you youngsters to be running along like this. Oh, we won't as soon as we can get located. And I can find a job. In the meantime, we're taking chances. Tonight, for instance. Suppose I've been a tramp or something. I'd have shot you. Don't you worry, I can take care of myself. And the kids, too. I believe that. Hey, have some tea. Good place, well. I thought Slug said this place was deserted. But he ain't been here for quite a while. It's beginning to look like all home week. Your dad, he used to be old crony, Junior. My, how time flies. Well, I ain't seen you since you knee height of best of her. Anything you want while you're in summit, then you just call on me. That's mighty kind of you, Mr. Uh, see, I'm sort of one-man band around here. Constable, Justice of the Peace, and run the general store. <laughs> In other words, you look after the morals, marriage, and meals in Summersville, eh? Yeah, I guess so. Well, see, here's what I'll have to let you off. Sorry, but I'm leaving my way to that muddy stretch with this car of mine. Well, that's quite all right. I've seen about having your lights turned on, get some vittles out to you in the morning. Good night, Junior. Good night, Miss Bingham. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks so much for the hospitality, Mr. Townsend. Oh, old lady, think I think of it. It's out. Oh. What? Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I'm terribly sorry. I was afraid it was somebody he sent. Oh, please, let's not start that hymn business all over again. The traffic here is terrific. Oh, I, I'm so sorry to bother you again, but, but it's so dark out there, I, I can't find anything. And I, I wonder if you and your wife would uh, let me stay here until it gets light enough to see where I'm going. Well, certainly. Come in. Come in. Here, let me take that coat. It's soaked. Why, this is a dreadful night, isn't it? Yes, isn't it? Come along. There's a perfectly good spare room over here. Make yourself comfortable until morning. Here's a light. I uh, hope I'm not putting you two out. <laughs> no, no, don't mention it. I suppose I'll feel very foolish in the morning if I find uh, Half Moon Lodge is right next door. Oh, uh, Townsend's the name. Uh, Henry Townsend. Good night. Yes, I think I like the pirate story best, too. What's your game? Game? What, what games do you like? Guessing games. And I think Mr. Townsend would like to play, too. Oh, shut up, will you? I'm trying to think of a way out of this. How about the way you got in, Captain Kidd or Baron Munchausen or whatever your name is? Uh, uh, Gulliver. All right, Mr. Gulliver. Travel. Will you quit clowning and let me think? Our guest is going to find out that he's our host in the morning, and we'll have to be missing. We'll have a good story to tell him. You can be chief storyteller. I'll be missing. Where are you going? Shh, I'm going to turn the twins into umbrellas. Hop on my broomstick and fly into the night. But look here. You can't take those kids out in a storm like this. Who can that be? Well, maybe it's opportunity. No. No, we knocked twice. Maybe it's somebody Something he, he said. said. Look here, you get out of sight. I'll see who it is. Good evening. Sorry to disturb you, sir. Not, a, not at all. What can I do for you? Tell me where I can find three females. What's the matter? Can't your friends find their own? <laughs> Sorry to say, this is a business search. Just picked up a call on the radio to keep a lookout for a girl about 20. Who skipped out of Frisco with two youngsters, twins. Hmm. Kidnapper? Huh? That's all we know, except there's a nice fat reward for them. What? Say, did you say twins? Yeah, did you see them? Did I see them? Brother, you're a luck. I talked to them. When? Where? Well, uh, late, this afternoon, right here, they, they drove in in an old broken-down Ford. 
girl more. She must be 30 if she's a day. Or a tough number, too. They, um, they wanted to know uh, what road to take to turn out to get to Salt Lake. Say, I'm grateful to you. That tip may mean a lot. Oh, sure. Did, did you notice the number of the car? Uh, well, now, let's see. It was a... Um... But when are we going to get the stuff? We? Say, it's too hot for me when you got to pick cops out of your hair. Slug will have to pull his own chestnuts out. we got it. Okay, Joe, coming. Thank you, sir. Don't mention it. Anything wrong? I heard a siren. Oh, just a couple of cops full of misinformation. I'm sorry that you were disturbed. Oh, that's quite all right. My, this place of yours seems to be very popular tonight. Well, I'll say goodnight again. Okay, the coast is clear. Scout deed I didn't deserve after. Deserve? I should say not. Well, and why did you... Say, listen. As long as someone's crazy enough to offer a reward for you, I'm not going to let a couple of dumb cops collect it. And besides, this is no weather to be yanking those kids around in. Well, the reward may be called off if you wait for a clear day. Lady, you're in no spot to be snooty. The outside world is evidently not exactly a safe place for you. Well, you can hardly expect to stay here now that our host has arrived. We? Exactly. We're both in a spot. You need a job, don't you? And a safe home for those kids? Well, this place is perfect. I never think of looking for you right under their noses. Yes, sir. I... Now let me finish. It's rather important that I have a place to stay, too. Well, for reasons that I can't explain right now. Well, it all sounds fishy to me. Oh, a horse of a different flavor when someone else needs a break, huh? How do you know that what some dreadful old man hasn't driven me to do something, too, when I have to stay out of sight? Okay, Mr. Gulliver. Now that that's settled, all we have to do is dispose of our host, and we've nothing more to worry about. Mm -hmm. Say, can you cook? Yes, but we can't wait for the man to die of indigestion. Listen, I've got a great idea. you see? Between the two of us, we'll make Townsend so comfortable that he'll beg us to stay. Oh, I hope you're right, Mr. Gulliver. Anyhow, we can't be ruled off for trying. Oh. I respond better to Dick. I'll remember that when I want a response, Mr. Gulliver. Right now, I want a little sleep. Mm, and you need it. Because tomorrow, little girl, we'll have a busy day. Good night. Thousand, here I come. I bet he's a burglar. Look at him. I bet he isn't burglars on their painting things. They do too. Where's your imagination? Well, Mr. Gulliver's not a burglar. Judy. He's nice, and I like him, too. Well, thanks, pal, for standing up for me. Judy said you were going to pick the force to save you. Then I better get busy, huh?
Good morning, Mr. Townsend. Hope you slept well. Just ready in a little sunshine. Oh, splendidly, thank you. As though I'd been in my own bed. <laughs> Fancy that. What a small world. Yeah, didn't it? Well, I must be up on the way. I've imposed on you good people long enough. Oh, I, I wouldn't put it that way. <clears throat> I don't suppose you've seen anything of my lodge this morning. Mr. Townsend, you're practically there. Really? Then I'll have a chance to be neighborly. We're depending on it. Rather uh, intriguing odor in the air. Uh, yeah. Your breakfast, Mr. Townsend, and just about ready for you. Oh, you shouldn't be so hospitable. You know, you might not be able to get rid of it. That's an idea. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, is he up? Yes, and feeling very much at home. Oh, be it ever so tricky, there's no place like his own. Your orchids, madam. Oh, thanks. Don't mention it. And uh, if my sales talk is as good as yours, we've got nothing to worry about. Oh, oh by the way, uh, thanks for the build-up. For what? Oh, my girlfriend, Jill, told me that you said I was nice. Well, I had to tell them something, didn't I? Well, anyhow, they like me. That's two against one. Well, well, look who's here. The gold dust twin. We are indeed here. Yeah. Jack and I'm Jill. Jack and Jill. Well, well, there's the hill. Where's your pail of water? If he starts that, I'll break his crown. Shh. Are you Mr. Henry Townsend? Yes, and I'll have... Oh. <laughs> Oh, Dick! What's the matter? Look, Dick, he's gotten out. What? Oh, well, there he is. Where? Out on the porch. Oh. Oh, there you are, Mr. Townsend. I have your breakfast already, Mr. Townsend. And I don't mind admitting that Mr. Townsend is ready for breakfast. Oh, that's fine. Give it right on the table. It's inside. Now, don't you get bothered, Mr. Townsend. Why, all this makes a lonely bachelor rather envious. You're a lucky man, Mr. Gulliver, to have such a lovely family. <laughs> Captain Marge is going to seem very empty. Are you going to stay here? Are you, Mr. Townsend? Uh, children, come along and have your breakfast. But are you, Mr. Jacob? <laughs> Why, this is nice. Rather like my lodge. Uh, have you folks been here long? No, no, only since last night. But unless we can do something with the owner, we won't be able to stay. How unfortunate. Yes, he suddenly decided that he wants to live here. Most inconsiderate of him. You, uh, you know, Mr. Townsend, your appreciation of home life has suddenly given me an idea. You, uh, you know, in a place like this, it's tough to get the right kind of help. Well, now, supposing it were you, for instance. Instead of sending away for a cook and a general handyman around the place, wouldn't you rather that we stayed and took the worries off your shoulders? If it were possible, I'd like nothing better. Oh, I'm glad you see it that way. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, pardon. For the moment, I thought I was home. <laughs> 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 yes, indeed, the traffic here is terrific. Good morning, sir. What can I do for you? Uh, where's Junior? Uh, junior? I haven't seen any Junior. You ain't seen him. I dropped him here last night. Well, he isn't here this morning. I'm sorry I can't help uh, you. Just a minute. Who are you and what you doing around here? Uh, I'm really a burglar, but I'm here on my vacation. Who are you? My name is Chester Pinkle. Pinkle? Oh, yes, of course. I've seen you lots of times in drugstores. Uh, think you're funny, eh? Well, you better tell me where Junior is and there'll be trouble. All right, then. I guess I'll have to tell you. He cried for the ant face this morning, so I gave it to him. If you poison Henry Townsend, I... Oh, hey. good morning, Constable. Did you call me? Who, who, who is this farmer, Junior? Oh, you mean Mr. Gulliver? He's been most kind to me. I lost my way last night and he took me in. Well, say, took you in. Don't you know where he is? Oh, you must have told me. I, I'm not supposed to know. Uh, See, Mr. Gulliver and I've been playing a little game Man, this morning. Well, he ain't going to play no games with me. He's going to explain what he's doing here. Gulliver, you'll have to excuse Constable Pinkham. He has no sense of humor. I, are you crazy, Junior? No, but I am annoyed at your treatment of my guest. Uh, Mr. Gulliver and, and his family are paying me a little visit. Casper, Casper! What? They're looking for you. The bank was robbed last night. All right, I'll be right along. Oh, 
whole thing looks darn funny to me. I don't like your insinuations, Constable. Good morning. Children. Don't embarrass him with compliments. He's a very modest young man. He's a very complete ass. I thought I was getting away with it. Oh, you were, famously. Until I tore my trousers and found I was sitting on my address. Well, then, why did you let me go on making a fool of myself for? I had to have my revenge for last night. Well, then, why save me from old John Law? For all you know, I may be the bank robber. Well, of course you may be. Uh, robbers do have lady assistants. But hardly twin babies when they go robbing. Townsend, uh, you've got an explanation coming to you. Uh, Judy here is not Mrs. Gulliver. She's Miss... Uh... Say, what is your name, anyway? Smith. Uh, Smith. And the twins are her sisters? What he's trying to tell you is that he really never saw us before last night. When he crawled in out of the storm, he found us here. Yeah, and as you probably guessed, we're both sort of up against it. And, of course, when we discovered who you were, I got the idea that we'd create a demand for our services. Hence the uh, charming breakfast amid family surroundings and the theoretical proposition, eh? Which you admitted was a good one. Well, Mr. Townsend, it's yours and it'll cost you practically nothing. Splendid! Just one thing wrong with it. That word, uh, practically. Oh, I, I'll fix that. We, we'll cut our price, won't we, Miss uh, uh, Smith? I'll cut it. We'll amputate it. There you are, Townsend. Yes, here I am. But not because I want to be. You see, this lodge is my only asset. And I'll have to do something with it in a hurry or go on a diet. Oh. Well, that's that. Oh, but think nothing of it. Mr. Gulliver will fix it for you. Say, uh, Townsend. I could figure out something to help you put this place over. Uh, would you mind if we all stuck around for a little while? Uh, love at first sight, eh, Gulliver? Oh, no, no, nothing like that. I'm just worried about her and those kids. They're in some sort of a jam. I don't know what it is. Myself, well, well, I'm in a spot, too. Aren't we all? Well, I suppose fire can starve as cheaply as one. Oh, cheaper. And much more amusingly. How about it? You're on. One die for all, and all for one die. Okay. But they won't go on without a struggle. No, sir. Let's make a list of our holdings. And who cares? We do, you wet blanket. Come here and listen to the plot. <clears throat> we three are going into business. We're going to turn the lodge into a hotel. Hotel? A hotel? And what can Fairy Godfather will we turn into guests for our retreat? Oh, the bees and the birdies. She's right, Gulliver. This place is too isolated. Nobody would even know there was a hotel here. Well, we let them know. Through the printed word. Advertising, my friends. Simple. Mm, very simple. All we have to do is rob a bank. Maybe I shouldn't have mentioned that. Let's pretend she's not here, Townsend. Women don't make sense anyway. It's dollars you need, Mr. Fixit. Well, I still have a few. And I have a little less. Oh, but it's silver tongue, my lad. I have a couple of gold fillings. Mm, we'll dig those out later. If you two will excuse me, I'll retire to my sanctum and whip up a little gray matter. Has a sort of a winning personality, hasn't he? He thinks so. You know, his face is so darn familiar, it worries me. Well, it isn't his face that worries me. It's his business ability. Follow the crowds to Half Moon Lodge, nature's garden spot for recreation and rest. Well, we've certainly had the rest. I'm practically worn out with it. What in the world is he doing? There. I hope that does the trick. What does it mean, Doc? Steve Detour. Well, I hope the right translation is customer.
is Half Moon Lodge. This is the place. We give real service. What do I tell her, Maggie? About a week? Oh, we better make it two weeks, Dave. Making special rates. Bath or shower? Say, do I have to take a bath to use your telephone? This isn't Saturday. Telephone? There's no telephone here. I well, thought... Why didn't you say so in the first place? Your old Doc Fixit's kind of a flop, isn't he? Huh? Poor old Doc Fixit. Maybe we can think up something to help. Come on, Jack. Cheer up, Dick. They say all signs fail in California. Say nothing of all Gulliver's ideas. My razor's losing its authority. Hey there. I want to talk to you. Junior, you know anything about them contraptions that's blocking traffic? What traffic? I ain't talking to you. You know what they're doing there? Well, nothing, I'm afraid. Traffic still goes by. You don't tell me you put him there, Junior. All right, I won't. But I will, said Cock Robin. I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little hatchet. Uh-huh. I thought so. Don't you know that's again the law? Hmm. But it was so lonesome here. Say, I've got a half a mind to... What you do with the other half? Why, you... You... Casper! Casper! What? Say, can't you leave me alone? But Casper, I've been looking for you. There's a couple in your office that... You want to get hit? Well, I... Looks like I, you have money. Well, I'll be right there, Joe. That's right, Cupid. Run along. Make two other people miserable. I'll be back. You better have that stuff off the rug. Say, how about recommending our hotel to the happy pair for their honeymoon? I wouldn't recommend nothing you was connected with. Difficulty? idea, even if it didn't work. It's still a good idea. Still is right. Say, now there is an idea. We have the bathtub. All we need is a little corn, a few raisins, a couple of yards of barbed wire, and a sprinkling of revenue off Oh, will you shut up and let me think? But you don't have to. We're all set. All we have to do is incorporate. Gulliver, Townsend, and Smith. Moonshine Limited. Limited? Did you say limited? It's a perfect trademark for us. Oh, thanks, Judy. That's all I needed. I can see the ads now. A picture of the lodge, with you and Henry. With our trusty shotgun. No, no, as bride and groom. Oh, then father has the shotgun. Will you shut up? No, you and Henry, bride and groom, standing under the sign, looking up. The sign reads... Moonshine Limited. Oh, quick, Henry, the shotgun. No, no, the sign reads... Honeymoon... Limited. And underneath the picture we read, a modern garden of Eden. You furnish the bride, we furnish the honeymoon. Oh, don't you see it, your dumbbells? Solitude, seclusion, privacy. We've been trying to sell it to the wrong people. This way it's unnatural. I tell you, Slug, the first night we tried to crash, the dump was like the Grand Central Station. And when the cops showed up, we couldn't take a chance. Well, that was nearly two weeks ago. You weren't such a dumb monks. You'd have found some way to get in. But Judas Slug, we tried everything. Even offered to work in a hotel for nothing. Now I know they're lying. Of course, you wouldn't use your brains and rent a room. Say, they're only featuring honeymoons. Do we look like a couple of turtle doves? You look more like a couple of stiffs if you don't get out of here. Go on, Scram. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. And so? And 
So, you and me has a date of that little love nest, sweetheart. Yeah. It's gonna be tough to keep after the one we just broke. We're kind of in demand. Don't forget, sonny boy, we're headliners. Look at our billing. Can't you ever forget you was in Vaudeville? I knew I should have bumped off that photographer. You may get another chance, big boy. That's what burns me. We could have been on our way to China by now if those mugs hadn't muffed getting that coin. How do you figure we're gonna get it? I got an idea. Spring it. Now listen to this. Ads, circular letters. Well, anyway, they prove a lot of people know we're in business. Honeymoon Limited is right. We had only to open our doors to the public, and that was enough for them. And far and near, happy couples flocked to Niagara Falls. How about joining them? Oh, Mr. Gulliver, this is so sudden. Here, mastermind, this is for you. For me? Love and bill collectors always find a way, you know. Now, now will you kids try to keep out of mischief for a while? Ladies, we've got to figure out some way to make people stop here or we can't stay. Come on, Joe, we gotta think. Around here, Sugar. Sure is, Emilio. Change of climate's gonna do us both a heap of good. Sure enough, honey. Keep the fingers crossed. Step on it, slug. They're on to us. I was a blow out, you sap. Just because you're made up for an old skirt, you don't have to act like one. Shut up, you green... Say, mister! What the... Yes, honey? You've got a flat tire. What's that? An awful flat tire. Well, fun my soul, I sure have. You better stop at our house. Doc, fix it, we'll fix it. Now, that's what I call true southern hospitality. Uh, whereabouts do you all live? We live at Honeymoon Limited. Sure, now. This is my wife, Mrs. Carver, Mr. Gulliver. How do you do, Mrs. Carver? And welcome to Honeymoon Limited. Thank you. Uh, I'll get it for you, Colonel. May we carry Josephine in? May we? 
Why, sure. Take her right along. Oh, there you are. Oh, and this is Miss Smith, our housekeeper, Hi. Colonel and Mrs. Carver. A real How pleasure, ma'am. I'll help you out, Mrs. Carver. Here, let me do that. Thank you, Miss Smith. I do hope my sister didn't wear you out with her chatter. Are those babies your sisters? Yes. Samuel, this young lady is the sister of those adorable twins. Adorable trios, more like it, Emily. Mm. Colonel Carver, we're most delighted to have you folks with us. And we're delighted to be here, aren't we, darling? Indeed we are, honey bunch. You have to excuse us, sir. Still honeymooning after 30 years. <laughs> Oh, uh, Mrs. Carver, this is uh, Mr. Townsend, the owner. How do you do? How do you do? And Colonel Carver. Mr. A Townsend. real pleasure, sir. Thank you. Well, you must be awfully tired. I'll take you right to your room. Thank you, sugar. My heart does feel a mite fluttery. You must go more easy, Annie Lou. You might get a setback. Mrs. Carver's heart causes a lot of trouble. Oh. Uh, Mr. Townsend. I think we should put uh, Colonel and Mrs. Carver in the room downstairs, next to mine. Well, certainly. I'll put the bags in there right away. Hey there! Just a minute! Well, Pinky, what are you all hot and bothered about? You still here? Now, don't be rude. I want our guests to like you. Colonel and Mrs. Carver, this is Constable Pinkham, our police force. Pleased to meet you. An unexpected pleasure, sir. Uh, what's wrong, Mr. Pinkham? You look worried. Yes, he doesn't seem to be his usual carefree, happy everyday self, does he? You can save your smart crack, young fella. You may need them if them jailbirds drop in on you. Well, they come here. What, what do you mean? Jailbird? Now, don't worry, folks. Our constable will have his little joke. <laughs> Killers that escaped ain't no joke. <sighs> don't talk about them here. Why, the police probably have them by now. They have not. We've all got orders to be on the lookout for them. You know, these woods around here make a pretty keen hideout. This is the only house for miles. Samuel, this is very distressing. Now, don't you fret, honey. Constable Pinkham's going to look after things. That makes me feel safer, honey. Oh, they're probably on the boat of China by now. Well, I'm warning you folks to stay close to the house nights and keep your doors locked. You can sleep in the road if you want to. Sweet disposition. <laughs> Our village Sherlock is a chronic crepe hanger, but don't you worry, Mrs. Carver. And we have three strong men to protect us. <clears throat> I suppose you gentlemen have farms. Oh, indeed we have, Colonel. Yes, sir. And besides that, Mr. Townsend and I are crack shots. Uh, indeed we are. You hear that, Emily Lou? Now we have nothing to worry about. Yes, I see. Well, all this has made me a mite nervous. Oh. I think I'd like to go to my room. Uh, come right in, Colonel. We'll show you the inside of the hotel. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Look, have a lovely time here. Your room's right over this way, Mrs. Carver. Well, sir, that's very comfortable. Glad you like it, Colonel. Here's the other thing, Colonel. Well, now, that's a good place for her. And you children can enjoy her, too. It's quite a fireplace. We hope that you and your wife will take advantage of it. And don't you worry about your car, Colonel. I'll fix the tire. Well, now, that's powerful kind of you, sir. We, uh, we may decide to take a ride later on. <laughs> uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, uh, certainly, sir. Thank you so much, honey. Look here, honey. Uh, you better not spoil. Well, uh, she'd be too hard to handle. She's making me feel like a new woman, Samuel. Well, that's all I hope. <laughs> now, you rest. If you need anything, just call me, won't you? Thank you, sugar. Listen, you mug. You keep your mind on your work until we get the coin out of there. Well, you never should have put it there in the first place. I'm dying for a smoke. Before dawn comes, Gulliver, fasting the zippers of his seven-league boots, will hike him away the statue's pot of well-earned gold from the old dragon ere the following day's five o'clock whistle blows. Then will the tatters of the spellbound Gulliver fall away and Richard be himself again, to return and sweep the haughty princess off her feet and into wedlock. As the twins would say, can duck fix it, fix it? And so ends Gulliver's travels, we hope. Pretty good, Grandma, huh? Oh, well, maybe you won't act quite so disdainfully when you see the size of the check this is going to get me. 
Well, Granny. Yeah, she's a nice old granny. <laughs> Not tonight, pals. But what a story I'm going to tell you tomorrow. A true story? What's it about? Oh, about us. You mean you and us? And Grandma? Mm -hmm. And Judy? Well, that's the part I'm not sure about yet. But it won't be any good without Judy. I know that. But you see, I'm under the spell of a mean old dragon. And I can't fix up the end of the story until I'm out of his clutches. You mean you have to kill him? Oh, I hope not. But once I'm free, I can say some magic words to a certain princess, and if they work... Then Judy can be in the story, and we'll live happy ever after. Kids, do you want to help your old dog? Well, then, tonight, when you say your prayers, make an extra special request for a happy ending to our story. Sure, Doc, fix it. We'll fix it. Sure, we'll fix it. Okay. Children, come on, get into bed. May have a telegraph line, please? Hello, Pinky. Hiya. Maybe it looks like you lose a bet. Well, you need to rub it in. Anyhow, the firm will have a swell novel. Yes, and he'll have a swelled head. The young scoundrel, winning my money and my family. You made him a present to the family. Say, why didn't you go after them when the big story tipped you off to their whereabouts? I didn't think Judy would fall for that egotistical young cub. Once I knew they were safe, I thought being on their own would teach those three young snips a lesson. <laughs> oh, how they'll rag you when they find out. Well, I'd give another 20,000 to keep him from winning that back. I'm not here. <laughs> Hello? Yes? Uh, just a minute. Someone's along the wire. It's that young scallywag. I won't talk to him. Tell him to go Hello? to... Hello? Uh, who? Uh, Constable uh, Pinkham. Uh, no, no, uh, his attorney. He says uh, he knows who sent you that threatening telegram and where they're holding uh, your grandchildren. Give me that phone. Hello? This is John Randall. Yes, I know. Gulliver's an alias. Well, he's a hold-up artist. He's very handy with a pen. <laughs> He'll stop at nothing. Yep, they're all here. This fellow they call the walrus. You know anything about him? An old timer, huh? Yep, dark-haired girl. Well, you better keep an eye on her. Yeah, she's wanted too. You better hold them till I get there tomorrow and identify them. And I heard a noise. We got out here just in time to see Mr. Gulliver fall and a man's figure disappearing through that door. Where was he? Are you all right, man? Happened? Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. I must have fallen asleep on that couch and something woke me up. Yeah, here's a flashlight. He sprang around up here in the fireplace and he, he reached mm. in here and took out some money. And I jumped him in and the scuffle, I guess I must have been knocked out. That's what we saw when we came in, Samuel. And someone uh, going out the front door. Well, there must have been two of them. The last thing I remember was his telling somebody else to get the stuff. Oh, yeah, we better look around, gentlemen. I'll be with you as soon as I get my gun. 
You better go to your room, Emilio. I sure will, sugar. Now, you be careful. Trust me, Lady Guinevere. Judy, but don't worry. We will. Now run along, sugar, please. Now I'm not going to leave you alone. But I want you to go, please. Now don't you worry. See anything, Colonel? No, sir. He he must have got away. Don't like Dick. Too late, I guess. Well, I've had an idea. Let's go inside. Come here. Gulliver. Keep your eye on the Colonel. Colonel, quiet. Throw up your hand. Both of you. You take care of Junior. Now you give me your gun, smart Alec. What's the matter with you, think of you crazy? You will find out. Now you go over there and sit down, both of you, so I can keep an eye on you. What is all this? Come in here. Come in here and sit down with your pals. Sit, I said. What's it all about, Dick? Sit down. Well, you know, Pinky, he must have his little joke. What's the meaning of this, Pinkham? It means that I'm wise to all of you. I've been suspicious of you for quite a while, but I didn't have no proof until tonight. Now I got it from the man you tried to take for 20000 you and your pal, the walrus. Oh, see here, Pinkham, that telegram was a joke. Joke, eh? Well, it's on you, then. There's the police around the way from Riverdale to help you enjoy it. Get back there. What? Did you all... Uh... Send for the police, Constable? You bet you. I ain't taking no chances with this gang. You know, Colonel, you and your wife had a narrow escape. Well, bless my soul. Why, this Gulliver is a hold-up man. Forger. The kidnapper on the side. The rest of them are his confederates. See here, Pinkham. You're going to find yourself in mighty hot water if you don't stop this monkey business. Yeah. We did like you said about plane, and look what fell in the window. Boy, you ought to give to the dragon to let you go. Well, what's this? So, fine business, teaching babies to steal. We didn't it is. We didn't steal it. We prayed for it. And you did a grand job, pals. Don't you cry. But you don't well. Now, say it is. Where'd you get this money? Samuel, come quick! My heart! Stop that man, you fool! He took the money! Well, <laughs> if I did, I must have been right careless with it. Hey, Constable. If you can spare me now, Constable, I'll see the Mrs. Carver. Go right ahead, Colonel. Go Thank right you, ahead. Thank you, sir. Now you sit down there. Oh, haven't you got any sense? Where did your children get that money? Well, well that's dumb, huh? I suppose you don't know nothing about that 20,000 he was trying to get from John Randall, either. John Randall? You've got to trust me, Judy. I, I can't explain now. Well, I can. It was ransom money for his grandchildren. Only Gulliver spiled his own game by tipping off their whereabouts. It isn't true, Judy. Don't you believe him. He's double-crossing you. So I see. Don't you worry, young'uns. You'll soon be home safe, because your granddaddy's coming to get you tomorrow. Judy! I'm afraid it's too late, kids. Your friend Doc has fixed that. This ain't no place for nice children. Better go to bed. Oh, no, you don't. You stay here. Go ahead, kids. Judy, shall we? Please, kids, go to bed for Judy. I don't like you, Constable, and I'm not going home to Grandpa. Constable, you have no right to hold me. I haven't done anything. Of course not. Oh, but you don't understand. The twins are my sisters. I'm Judith Randall. Yeah, and I'm Kate Smith. Sit down, save your breath. We won't go home to Grandpa. 
Yeah. What do you think I'm doing? And so I took the money out of the cage and threw it in the twins' room through the window. And that's how it happened to get there. Yeah, I suppose the parrot stole the money in the first place. No, sure, like what those other two birds did. And you let them get away. Well, we'll see about that. Now, you stay right there. Colonel Carver. Yes, sir? I didn't mean to disturb you, Colonel, but, uh, uh, how was your wife? Well, sir, she had a right bad turn. I don't like to leave her for a while yet. Certainly not, Colonel. Don't you take any chances. No, sir, I won't. Thank you, sir. Good night, Colonel. Good night, sir. Come on, get going. He may believe he was a colonel. Say, jailer, how long will it take me to walk to San Francisco? Oh, you won't have to walk there. The car will be calling for you in a minute. Judy, I've got to make a break for it. Please trust me. I'm doing it for you, too. You've done enough for me. Oh, no, you don't. Get back there. Get back there, I said. Howdy, boy. Constable Pinkham? Yes, sir. Burns, Riverdale. Detective Riley. There's your customer. Look him over. He's crazy, officer. Mr. Townsend here owns the lodge. I'm Dick Gulliver, the manager, and this young lady's one of our guests. That's right, officer. This old fool's been holding a gun on us and letting a couple of real crooks get away. They're lying, and I'll get Colonel Carver out here and prove it. Bingham. No need to do that. Uh, we know these two babies. Sure, we got their mugs in the family album. You're as crazy as Pinkham. Pipe down, Henry. How did you know my name was Henry? That's what we're paid for, to know everything. Hey, Riley. This looks like the last Spike Mint. You mean the one he said the mob was using for a hideout? I reckon this place all right. But you remember, Riley, he said there was a lot of jack hidden around here. Yeah. We better look around. I'm way ahead of you. Here it is. You better take charge of it. Gee, Constable, you think of everything, don't yeah. you? Thinking if there were only more men like you on the force, our jobs would be a lot easier. Watch out, sir. Shucks, boy, it's just done my duty. And I'm sure glad to turn the responsibility over to you. You know, that Gulliver is a pretty tough customer. Kind of forget, uh, just what is your specialty? Taking candy away from baby? No. I clean bird cages. I wouldn't brag about that if I was you. You know, Riley, I don't trust these two guys. If we're going to take them in, we'd better uh, watch our step. Sure, put the bracelets on them. Hey, Pinkham. I must have left mine in the car. We'll have to use yours. We want to make sure that these two guys stick together. Now, Henry, if you'll just stick out your right hand. Pick them up! Give me that gun. Take your hands off me. You'll be sorry for this. Knock them down. Knock them down. Give me that gun. Take Knock your hands off me. Let go of me. Colonel, catch, 
Henry, you better take charge of this money. Pinky here's a little careless. Oh, is that so? Well, you cocky young fella, considering you ain't out of the woods yet. You hear that? Well, you got me, Pinkham. I know when I'm licked. Now you're showing some sense. Stop! Where are you are? Let me go. Duty! You and the kid's duck out of sight. You're interfering with the law, young fella. You'll be arrested for assaulting an officer. And you'll be out of a job when I tell them about your bright performance tonight. And I will, too, if you don't behave. Oh, Pickham, what's up? Plenty, Davis. Look what I got for you. have a chance to turn this into cash. Well, somebody's taking the key. Certainly. Somebody knows you have very good sense. You! Why, Dom, we're running away from you. Judy said so. I know that, Jill. That's her story, and she stuck with it. Because I hold the key to the situation. Give me that key. And get out of this car, Dick Gulliver, or Nero, or Shakespeare, or whoever you are. Take your choice, lady. We've all three done pretty well. Why did you come back, Doc, to turn us into cash? With his little magic chisel. Well, it won't work. Come on, get out. Now give me that key. Just because I didn't let you in on something that was none of your business, you go dramatic on me and start fleeing into the night. Give me that key. I warn you. If you run away again, I may not come back for you. You think I want you to? Oh, you conceited, egotistical, opinionated, self-satisfied worm. And you're a useless, empty-headed, hard-hearted, untrustworthy wench. We'll have lovely children. You're welcome, you lucky girl. Now, you and the kids go back to the hotel and get some sleep. I'll come back for you tomorrow and marry you. Oh, I, I suppose you think you can get more out of Grandfather by marrying me. Why, George, I bet he would pay more than that to get rid of you permanently. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. Well, you'll have to find some other way to make a living. Come on, girls, get out. I'm sleepy, Judy. Are we going back to bed? No, we're going to walk. I'm too tired, Judy. I don't want to walk. All right. I'll go alone. Kids. Will you trust your old doc fix it and help him out? Sure, doc. How? Well, then you run back in the lodge here and tell Henry to look out for you until I can come back and fix everything. Ducky! Bill! Come on! We want that happy ending, don't we? Okay, run along. Thanks, pals. Not so fast. No female's gonna walk out on me. You mind your own business. Will you quit Let that? Let me go. Will you stop kicking? Let me go. I'll break your neck. Oh, oh you, know, you useless, empty oh, girl, but you are a vile, tempered young woman. Oh. There. Get in that car. Where are the children? They've gone to bed. They're obeying orders like you're going to from now on to get spanked. Oh, you wouldn't dare. No. Are you going to get in that car? Don't waste your time. The door's locked. Oh, you... Go on. I... Scream if you feel like it. Can't possibly do you any good, and it uh, might relieve your feelings. Oh, you... I'll even let you cry on my shoulder. Do you think they'll fix it? We'll fix it, Henry? Do you, Henry? Oh, 
I'm sure he'll fix it. 